Hello guys, and welcome back to another video. Today's video, got some funny stuff to go over. Some pretty interesting stuff, some weird stuff at that. And before I get too far into the video, we might even be over 20,000 subscribers. So if we are over 20k right now, thank you guys so, so much for that. That is crazy to even think about. We are 20% of the way there to 100,000. That is absolutely unbelievable. I will be setting up some giveaways fairly soon here, so keep an eye on my Twitter, join my Discord, and all that stuff just to know when the giveaways go live. I will be telling you about them in videos as well. I have some pretty cool stuff to give away, so you don't want to miss them. And as always, be sure to like the video as it really does help the channel out. So, uh, the first topic of today. So, as you all know, you guys have probably been playing Elden Ring. I know I have been playing Elden Ring. I'm a big fan of, you know, the Souls-type games. And I would argue that Elden Ring is probably the, one of the highest quality games out uh, that's current right now. I would say it's a very, very well done game in general. But one of Battlefield 2042's and Battlefield 5's actually UI slash UX designers on Twitter doesn't seem to think so. And let's all remember how bad Battlefield 2042's UI is in particular. I actually did an in-depth comparison of Battlefield 2042's UI versus Battlefield 4. I'll link that video if you don't know how bad Battlefield 2042's UI actually is or how many features it's missing. But I just think it's hilarious that Mr. Ahmed Salama would tweet that, quote, The fact that Elden Ring scored a 97 Metacritic is proof that reviewers don't give a flaming poop about game UX. My life is a lie. Well, here, here's the thing, Ahmed. If you did actually work on 2042's UX slash UI, uh, let's just say that it's less than satisfactory and absolutely worse in almost every single aspect to previous Battlefield games, and definitely worse than Elden Ring's UI. Uh, as I've said, I've been playing Elden Ring, you know, regularly, and I have had a whopping zero UI bugs. So, you know, just gonna go ahead and say that it's actually substantially better than anything you actually worked on here. And, obviously, a ton of people saw this tweet and absolutely roasted the living shit out of him, and since then, he has actually made all of his tweets private. So, mmm, I, I mean, we can all learn a valuable lesson here, right? In other news, Battlefield 2042's update 3.3 slash scoreboard update should be going live this week. So, we'll see how that is. And finally, Battlefield 2042 Direct Communication Twitter, in a recent post, tweeted out these prototype layout differences between the current layout and the proposed changes to Breakthrough and Conquest layout, specifically for the map Kaleidoscope. They did not provide any other screenshots for anything else they were planning to do. But this thought we'd take a look at them here and just point out some strange things that I noticed. So on the left is the current layout with everything uh, how it is right now, and on the right is proposed changes. So let's take a look at the left image first. You see, obviously, Kaleidoscope Breakthrough. Um, you move through the map left to right, so just keep that in mind as I'm talking about this, and they also provided a conquest change layout, which we'll be going over as well. But one of the most interesting things I see here is if you look at the A sector in the first image to the left versus the prototype layout to the right, you'll notice that the entire top part of that sector is essentially empty and useless. And if you notice specifically where the S2RU spawn is on the first image here, I'll zoom in to give you guys a better sense of where I'm talking about. But that entire area is actually like a 100 foot long hill. And I'm just interested to see why they would actually change something like this. Because if anything, I actually prefer this layout less. Now obviously this is prototype, so maybe they could change it before they release it. But knowing DICE, this is probably finalized already if they're showing it to us. But in my opinion, having played Breakthrough as my main game mode in Battlefield 2042, I actually think the A sector in this is going to be an absolute nightmare for defenders because they essentially just gave the attackers free reign of more of the map and concentrated the defenders in essentially one location. And I don't really think that's going to play a lot better. And another interesting thing to point out, you guys might understand that you can jet ram in this game and Kaleidoscope is actually one of the most egregious offenders of jet ramming particularly on the A1 Russian spawn point, which you can see on the left image. 
Um, with the prototype layout, they actually reduced the amount of spawns from three to two here. So what I'm wondering is, will this make jet ramming even worse? Because with the reduction of the defender's deployment spawns, you're actually increasing the amount of people that spawn at either spawn point. So this could potentially be even worse for entire teams getting wiped out at the beginning of the round. Now, jumping over here to look at the Conquest prototype layouts versus the normal ones, they're basically attempting, what they said in the post is they're trying to essentially funnel the action better, right? So what they're doing is they're essentially making it so you just have a bunch of clumped up points together in a sort of a linear layout along the bottom of the map. But again, you know, the entire top of the map is essentially free between A1 and E1. And the only middle point is D1. So I think this will probably result in this conquest layout playing a bit more fast paced, obviously. But again, you can see how detrimental the size of these maps are. And correct me if I'm wrong, Kaleidoscope's the smallest map in Battlefield 2042 as a base map. And you can, you can see right here, it's still too big. So if them rearranging point setups doesn't work on this map, I'm going to love to see how it works on other maps. So that's really it for this video. Thank you so much for 20,000 subscribers. I have been doing or attempting to do uh, regular YouTube content now for I think just a little over a year. Um, I wish I started YouTube sooner. It is a lot of fun. I really like seeing, you know, all the reactions to the videos. I like reading all the comments. Although some of the comments on the last video about BF5 were delusional kind of. But hey, all I'm trying to say about Battlefield 5 is... You can't 180 an opinion. BF5 is still trash, and I think a lot of people have already forgotten that. But even though the comments uh, I disagree with a lot of those videos, I still like reading them. I still like debating sometimes even, and YouTube has been a lot of fun. Like I said, giveaways are coming very soon. Won't tell you exactly what I'm giving away yet. I want to keep that a secret till I announce it. So hit the subscribe button, turn notifications on, check the YouTube community tab, follow me on Twitter, and join the Discord if you want to keep up to date on the day-to-day -day things with the giveaways, I will definitely be announcing the winners on YouTube community tab and Discord and Twitter. So if you if you win and you miss the announcement that you won, it's not my fault. Again, thank you guys so much for 20,000 subscribers. It's pretty surreal, and I will see you guys in the next video. Second.